here in the beautiful and just so richly historic city of York in Northern England. Of course, it hasn't always been called York. York was a name that it was eventually be, uh, given by William the Conqueror. Before that, it was known as Jorvik by the Vikings who controlled this kingdom for large stretches of history. Before that, it was Efferwich by the Anglo-Saxons. And before that, it was Iboricum, named so by the Romans. And it was the Romans who were here leading a campaign against the Picts north of here into Scotland, uh, led by one of their own emperors when a just massively historic event took place very near to where I'm standing, right at the foot of the York Minster. By the year 305 AD, Roman politics are, well, they're pretty complicated. I'll try to simplify it as best I can. Basically, you had four emperors in the Roman Empire. You had two in the east and two in the west. And there was a senior emperor who had the title of Augustus, which goes back to Caesar Augustus. And then you had a junior emperor who had the title of Caesar. And so you had one of each of those in the east and the west. And the man who had the title of Augustus in the Western Roman Empire was by 305, a man named Flavius Valerius Constantius. And he was here on campaign in Northern England, moving into Scotland, when he died suddenly in the summer of 306. His son, who was with him, we know as Constantine the Great today. And it was said that very near to the time that he died, uh, Constantius instructed his soldiers to declare his son the new emperor. Well, that typically wasn't done. Standard procedure, I think, typically called for whoever was the Caesar, the junior emperor, to become Augustus, the senior emperor. That was how it had happened for him. But it didn't happen that way in this case. Here in York, very near to where I'm standing, one of the greatest Roman emperors of all time was proclaimed Augustus, Constantine, was proclaimed Augustus by the soldiers who were with him. And he would carry that title to incredible history. He very soon after, within a few years, became the first Christian Augustus. Uh, and it was through him that Christianity eventually became the religion of the Western Roman Empire. And you see that on the statue here, which was placed just about uh, 25 years ago, uh, which remembers Constantine becoming a Christian. And it remembers the story that is told, uh, supposedly that Constantine looked up into the sun while on campaign and saw a cross in the sky and was told that by that sign, he would conquer. And he then became a Christian and led the entire empire into Christianity from there on.